Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a chemistry lab to share with you today. We are working through our main lesson block. This is by Live Education. This is the Waldorf curriculum and we are working on chemical processes in a candle. And so today we're working on this particular demonstration and for this demonstration you need a paraffin wax candle and you need a jar that's been chilled. So I've chilled this so it's cold to the touch, not frozen, but it's been out of the refrigerator for a little bit so hopefully we can still get a positive or accurate demonstration. So what we need to do is light our candle. This is a very simple demonstration. We just need to light our candle and then place our cooled jar over the candle and then watch the phenomenon. So I'm going to light our candle. And then we are placing our jar over the candle, but we don't want to extinguish it. So we're going to rest it above so it can still get some oxygen in. Just have it right over. Okay. So it's slowly, it's slowly happening. As we keep the candle, we can see that there's a bit of mist forming inside the jar. We have, no, we don't have a droplet of water yet, but we do see a lot of mist sort of forming on the inside. So we're going to leave this a little bit and uh, do the demonstration one more time and leave the jar in the refrigerator a little bit longer or do the demonstration soon after it comes out of the refrigerator because we let it sit at room temperature a little bit too long. So we're going to try it one more time. Okay, we've put it in the freezer for about three minutes and now we'll try it again. See that? So that if you if you took your finger and you wiped it on the inside, you could um, feel like water moisture. We almost see droplets forming. There's some droplets on that side. It's very faint to see. All right, super simple demonstration, but I'm not sure that the phenomenon was really witnessed that well. So but we'll still write up our lesson. We're attempting this demonstration again, lighting the candle, and then our jar is cool, but not frozen. And we just wanna watch as the, the inside of the jar becomes more frosted. And we're really looking to see if we can see any droplets of water form.
So there are the tiniest little droplets forming on the inside, but it is not easy to see. And I also, it's not clear whether this wouldn't normally happen anyway in the absence of the candle. So I'm not feeling really good about this particular demonstration, but we are still going to examine the phenomenon and write up a lesson for the main lesson book after we go over what's actually happening because there is some uh, moisture that's collecting on the inside and you can see but I was hoping for a more visible demonstration where the droplets would be more noticeable. Okay, that's a little bit more noticeable. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time because as I was doing the following demonstration, I found that we had a better way to experience the moisture in the flask. If the, if the flask is actually at room temperature, it is a cool day. And so the, in, the, our inside temperature right now is about 63 to 65 degrees. But I noticed that when we were doing our next demonstration, we we're able to see the water vapor a little bit more. So I'm going to light a match. And I am going to burn this match on the inside. And oh, right away, you can see the, um, the vapor form. So let me do that a little bit more. And then I don't want all that smoke because that's like obstructing like where you can actually see the vapor and that's not the vapor but it's in here so not quite the water droplets but you can feel the moisture and it's not the residue we don't want to mistake the residue with the moisture it's the moisture that feels um, moist to the touch and so you can tell you can tell the difference this is more of a residue right here and that's going to like wipe off and sort of leave like some just it makes it look a little bit dirty but it's the moisture that when you when you're feeling it feels a uh, more like moisture it feels it feels a little bit wet but there isn't quite enough in order to form the droplets and I think that's where if this container was chilled you could see the droplets more but we were not able to get those results and I think part of it was that our opening for the mason jar was a little bit big but this way you can really see that moisture um, form different from the residue so we don't want to make sure we want to make sure that we are noticing the difference between the residue and the moisture and if it forms into droplets it's easier to tell what was the moisture. We're going to try one more time with a larger flask that I'm going to chill for about five minutes in the freezer. Okay, so it was in the freezer for about three minutes, three to five minutes. And you can already see the, the condensation. That's why I'm finding it a little bit harder to really see it as well as when you are doing a flask that doesn't have anything that's not chilled, I should say. You can see the condensation a little bit better. And you'll know the difference in the condensation by how it feels, because that feels moist. So now let's try it. See if we can see that condensation a little bit better.
Just don't think it's as obvious. Oops. That's not working. Let's try that again. Yeah, I'm not having as much success doing it that way as when you when you just do it with an empty flask that does not have, that's not been chilled. I think it's just more obvious that way. And there is a difference between the residue that's left behind and the moisture. So I just want to clarify the difference between the two because there, there will be residue um, pretty quickly, especially if your, if your fuel source is the wax from a paraffin wax candle versus from other um, like say a beeswax candle I think the paraffin wax candle and I haven't done a test to show the difference between the two but my understanding based on the chemistry and the lessons is that with the paraffin wax candle you will see that residue form and to distinguish between the residue and the moisture is really how it actually feels and and how it looks once you remove it with your finger. So to the best of my understanding, based on the chemistry, the moisture, you could wipe it away and it will, it will, it will, it will completely wipe away. It won't leave like a smear, but if you have the residue or any soot, that's going to be more difficult to remove, or it may leave more of a smear after you remove it. We're doing one more variation for this demonstration, going back to our original quart mason jar and a candle, slightly different candle, but the big difference is that the mason jar is at room temperature. Now you can see that we've placed the jar entirely on top of the candle. Originally, I had it above the candle so that there was enough oxygen for the candle to burn. However, with a small flame and with just a moment of doing this, you can see that we're getting better results. We don't need to have an airflow. Eventually, the oxygen will burn out, but we can see a lot more clearly the vapor that is inside this jar versus using a chilled jar that already becomes frosted because of the temperature difference. So I find that finally, the third way that we did this demonstration ended up being the best way. So a nice, large, clear jar using a candle rather than a match. And this way you can really see the condensation of that moisture from the combustion process on the glass. Our original mason jar was inscripted with the different measurements as well as the name of the jar, but using a clear glass jar with nothing on it makes the condensation process that much more visible. So we ended up trying this demonstration three different ways with slightly different results based on the materials that we used, which I think was really instructive in this entire demonstration. However, in retrospect, I would have tested this out in advance, especially if this was in a classroom setting. Now that we have completed our demonstration several different ways over several days, it's time to write up our lesson in our main lesson book. I'm using these main lesson books from A Child's Dream. They measure nine and a half inches by 12 inches, and each two page spread is separated by an onion skin. So I do like that these have blank pages because we're going to do our illustration on this page and then write our narration around this illustration. By this age for students, they're typically using smaller main lesson books with a lot more lined pages, but I'm still really enjoying this larger format and the blank pages. So we're going to draw a candle within a jar that is sort of a combination of all of the trials that we did for this project. And so I have a little candle and I think in the end, a candle versus a um, lit match is a better way to do this project. And a large glass mason jar is better than a flask. And working at room temperature, in my opinion, was better than working with a chilled glass. So for this project, we're going to be doing our written narration a couple of days after we did our demonstration. And the demonstration did take several days since we did go over it a few different times in order for us to get 
the results that we were looking for. And I really wanted it to be obvious for my students so that there wasn't any ambiguity as to whether the frosting of the jar was as a result of the jar being chilled versus the moisture that was produced through the combustion process and the water vapor having time to condense against the glass. For this lesson, we are using our Lyra color pencils to do the illustration. And we are enclosing our candle illustration inside the glass jar. But in our actual demonstration, we had the jar over the candle rather than the candle inside. So same results, same process, but the illustration looks a little bit different. I would prefer that our illustrations match the apparatus a little bit better, but I am satisfied with the way this illustration turned out and how it shows the process, the demonstration, the science behind what was happening. And then the narration itself can help depict the process that we went through in order to get these results, the different materials that we used, and of course the chemistry behind the phenomenon that we're observing. At this point, it's been a couple of days since we've done our demonstrations and another day since we've done our review. And so now it's time to write up this lesson in the main lesson book. This gives the students enough time to process what they observed and to bring that information back up after a couple of days so that we're not just talking about the phenomenon, doing the demonstration, writing up the lesson and doing the illustration all in one day, that wouldn't be enough time for the student to process that information, to sleep on it, and to bring that information back up through a review process. So this is what the main lesson book entry looks like when it's complete. We have our illustration and our written portion as well as our title. I'm really glad that these entries are only taking up one page. It makes the illustration a lot easier to do and we're keeping our narration quite short. I hope that you enjoyed this look at our chemistry lab for our main lesson block in chemistry. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video where you can find more information about our chemistry main lesson block as well as links to the materials that we're using and other tutorials. You can find the link to that blog post in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram and now on TikTok at Pepper and Pine.